Hi, I'm Tim Kelly from Montgomery Investment Management. Welcome to the first of our video insights for 2013. 2012 was a successful year for us at Montgomery, and I hope it was for you as well. To get the next year off to a solid start, today I wanted to talk about some principles that are critically important to us at Montgomery and also to other fund managers, but are principles to which some individual investors don't pay quite as much attention as they should. I'm talking about risk management and portfolio structuring. The idea of making sure you've got enough capital allocated to your best ideas, while at the same time making sure you're not exposed to undue risk. We'll start with a couple of observations on risk. When we invest in cash, we have a pretty good idea of what the outcome is going to be. If interest rates are, say, 5% per annum, then we know with a high level of confidence that over the course of a year, we can expect $100 in cash to turn into $105. In the case of equities, there's a lot more uncertainty. If we start with $100, we expect probably to do a bit better than cash, and on average the Australian equity market has delivered around 11% per annum. So we might expect over the course of the year to end up with $111 from an equity investment. Problem, of course, is that we may do much, much better, or we may do much, much worse. The range of outcomes is potentially very wide from a very good outcome to a very bad outcome. And that dispersion of outcomes reflects the volatility or the risk of investing in shares. And there are a couple of problems that arise from this. First problem is that if we need the money at the end of the year for whatever reason and we need to sell our investments, then we've crystallised a loss on investment if the market has gone down in that period of time. Of course, if you have a, a longer time horizon, you don't need the money next year, but you can afford to wait until market conditions are better, then this risk is not such an issue for you. But one of the first things you need to think about in structuring your investments is what is your time frame? Do you need the money soon or can you afford to leave the money for an extended period of time? And in the Montgomery Fund, we recommend that a time horizon of, of at least three to five years is appropriate for the money that you have invested in that fund. So there's a time dimension. The second issue that arises in relation to risk has to do with investor behaviour. When this happens, when the markets perform badly and share prices go down, there's a natural tendency for investors to want to sell shares and retreat to the safety of cash. In fact, there's a tremendous amount of research that's been done that shows a very clear pattern of investor behaviour, which is to sell shares when investment markets have performed poorly and to put more money into shares when investment markets do well. And the research also shows that this pattern of behaviour is very destructive to long-term returns. The very best investors do the opposite of that. When share markets have performed really badly, it's more likely that equities are cheap, and that's the time that you should be looking to invest more. Conversely, when equity markets perform very well for a period of time, it's more likely that shares have become expensive, and that's really the time you should look at selling. So, as well as the time dimension, there's a behaviour dimension to risk. And in thinking about how to structure portfolios, it's important to think about how you react to this sort of circumstance. Are you able to leave the money there, or do you feel inclined to withdraw money at, at a time like that? There's one other issue with risk that I want to touch on, and that is that, all else being equal, a high level of volatility can actually adversely impact your long-term investment returns. And I'll illustrate this with an example. Let's imagine that we start the year with $100, we invest it and we earn a 20% return. So at the end of that first year, we've grown our $100 to 120 Next year, we have a bad year, it's a negative 10% return. 10% of 120 is 12, so our investment value goes down by 12, and we end up at 108 the arithmetic average of these two years is plus 10, but because of the volatility of returns, we've done slightly worse than that at 108. Now, let's look at a more volatile example, where we start the year with $100. In the first year, we do really well. We make a plus 50% return, and we grow our investment funds to 150. In the next year, we have a bad year. It's a negative 40% return. 40% of 150, is 60. So this year we lose 60 and we end up actually with less than we started. We've turned 100 into 90. The arithmetic average of the two returns is still plus 10, 
but because we've taken a very high level of risk that we haven't been rewarded for, we've done much worse with our investment in this case. So there are a couple of lessons uh, learned from this. In terms of the, the way in which you structure a portfolio, there are perhaps three things to think about. Firstly, be aware of your time horizon. When do you need the money? Can you afford to leave it in for the long term? In which case you can tolerate a little bit more risk. Um, secondly, think about your attitude towards risk and the way you might behave if, if this happens. If experience tells you that you're likely to want to pull money out of the market when markets are bad, then it may be in your long term interest to accept a, a lower level of risk from your investments. Uh, for example, uh, margin loan may not be the right sort of uh, product for you to look at. Um, finally, there are some, import some important lessons in relation to portfolio structuring. Uh, and the first one is not to allow any single investment to represent too large a proportion of your portfolio. Because if you do that, you're increasing the volatility of your portfolio without necessarily being rewarded for the extra risk. How much is too much of a portfolio depends on your, your circumstances and it depends on how strongly you feel about the investment opportunity. But to give an example, in uh, our funds management operation, it's unusual for us to allow any investment to represent more than about 7.5% of the value of the fund. The final point that I'd make is to think very carefully about investments in your portfolio that expose you to a high level of risk. At Montgomery, uh, many of you will realise that we pay a lot of attention to quality and performance ratings. Uh, and the reason we do that is as much about risk as it is uh, about return. We very, very seldom find companies in the resources sector where we feel the, the risk re return trade-off is sufficiently attractive uh, and we never invest in the very speculative end of the resources sector because we feel that we're exposing investors to a very high level of volatility and the returns that we can expect to get on those investments don't justify the level of risk we're taking. So at the end of the day at Montgomery we're very proud of the returns that we've been able to earn but we're also very proud of the fact that we've done that without exposing our investors to an unduly high level of risk. Looking forward to 2013, we're cautiously optimistic about the markets and we hope that some of these ideas will help you to enjoy a successful 2013 as well with your own investments, um, capturing the upside of your, your best ideas but at the same time managing volatility so that the long term outcome is a good one. That's it for this week's Video Insight. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, don't forget to follow Roger on Facebook and on Twitter.